Stand up in the fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel. A chapter from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The evangelist, apostle and pure disciple, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. A psalm of our teacher, David the prophet and king, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. The Lord. Will commend his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Lord God, Saviour and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, glory be to you forever. Then it happened that as he was coming near Jericho, that a certain blind man sat by the road begging, and hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, and he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commended him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, What do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Glory be to God forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Um, to the, to tonight's gospel, it's about a miracle was performed by our Lord Jesus Christ in Jericho, um, before the time or the before he starting the journey to crucifixion, and the three go gospels, some Matthew and some Mark and some Luke, mention this miracle, and it is a reflection about humanity that humanity was blind and couldn't see our Lord Jesus Christ. And it starts that he was coming near to Jericho that a certain blind man sat by the road begging. When someone is blind spiritually, he has to go for begging, to beg this world for any desires or pleasures or for any needs. But that person asked, what it meant. And they told him that our Lord Jesus Christ was passing by. At that time, many people saw our Lord coming, but no one has felt his presence except him. He had different eyes through his heart that he could recognize the Lord himself and his presence. 
And then he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. For sure, something was enlightened inside him to know that our Lord Jesus Christ is the son of David. He's referring to the Messiah. But many people around him tried to make him quiet and to stop him. But he cried out more. Those people, they are trying to make, make him quiet. They, they are the obstacles that people, they put in ahead of us when we come back to the Lord. Even when someone come, is coming back to the church, you'll find the voices of many people to say things to him to make him quiet. And also, when someone is growing up in his spiritual life, you will have many voices to stop that person from growing up. It could be any reasons. It could be of jealousy. It could be of the church is paying attention to that person. Or it could be for anything. Or it could be the trials of the devil by trying to say to that person, there is no hope. No one is going to listen to you. Whatever you ask for, no one will answer your cries. But the blind man cried more and more. He had such a great faith in his heart that God will answer his cries. And crying out, this is a form of prayer and supplication. And of course, those people, they have faith. When they pray, they receive. And while the people trying to stop him from crying out or to make him quiet, the Lord himself, Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. What a great privilege when everyone is noisy around you trying to tell you, stop, stop, stop. And then the Lord himself will pay attention to you and he would say, come to me. This is a great thing that when we feel that the Lord is always paying attention to our cries. And the way how he said it as well, when he st stood still and commanded him to be brought to him, when he had come near, he asked him, saying, what do you want me to do for you? What a gentle approach from our Lord to him, with great gentleness and kindness. Of course, he's trying to check about his own will. What, do, what did he want from the Lord? And the Lord, in his kindness, he knows all our answers even when we, he asks our questions. When we ask our questions, he knows the answers. But at the same time, he said to him, Lord, that I may receive my sight with great faith and enthusiasm and determination. He asked him, son of David, have mercy on me. And now he wanted to have his sight. God always looks after us. And God is willing to answer our prayers. He pays attention to our cries. And he will never forget us or reject us for that simple man, blind man, he was a bigger. Now, he had more than other people have had. And then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Can you tell me how many hundreds around our Lord at that time? And how many people um, around him, walking with him, coming to him to see his miracles and all that kind of stuff? But that person... He was so rich, even he looked a bigger, asking people for help. But actually, he had such a great help from the Lord himself. 
through his faith. And when he said to him, your faith has saved you, immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. Those people, when they were blind and they live in darkness, when they recognize Christ and they see him differently, they have to follow him. Those people, when they walk with him and they, can, they cannot recognize him, they will never be able to see him. That person, he restored not the physical eyes, but the spiritual side inside him. He was able to see him and to be in touch with him. And those people, when they receive the spiritual sight, they raise in the form of a resurrection and they follow him, which means to serve him and then to preach his kingdom as well. And then he got into a, a really a great way is to communicate with the Lord. In the beginning, he was asking him, have mercy upon me. Now he was glorifying God. But not only that, all people, when they serve it, give praise to God. So whatever God does with us, it is not only for us. It is for all the church. When you see someone is away from God and he comes back, he is not coming back for himself, but he's coming back for the church. And all of us, we praise the Lord. And this is the body of Christ. We are so happy when we see God's um, works in the life of the, his children or in the life of the children of the church. And all of us, we glorify him and we're praising him. And the link here between this gospel and the resurrection, that the resurrection gives light and it has light. And also, we look at things differently through the light of the resurrection. And that person, he received that light, and then he received the sight, his sight, to be able to see Christ. Let us ask the Lord, through the power of his resurrection, he may open the eyes of our hearts, so we'll be able to see him differently. We'll be able to see his power. We'll be able to see his love will be able to see um, his glory and we walk with him and we follow him, praising him all the days of our lives. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Oh, well.